doubled in with that hammer strike. It was nice and subtle. We're just gonna try something slightly different. It's not that different, it's slightly different. As this arm grabs me, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in and shoot that first block. And as this comes through, I'm gonna expand and use my good old what? Chicken wrist, right? Most of you don't know the chicken wrist yet. Right, or ox jaw block. So from the chicken wrist, that's gonna come up again. I'm gonna drop in and shoot him in, sorry. Drop in and shoot him in the, uh, in the jaw. Does that make sense? So all I'm trying to do now is explore, what we already explored here was the load up and that broken, I call it a broken uh, bow, but a forward bow back into our neutral, reversing that torque, right? In this case, we're gonna drop in and we're gonna use the muscles in the legs to expand up like a cobra. You just can shoot into the throat there if you'd like. And then we're just gonna drop bam, right back in. All right, just to explore this con uh, uh, contraction, boom, and, can, uh, and then release, right? Expand, release, expand, release. Are we clear? Yeah, so, yeah? we've got to trust. The other gives us the power and the backup mass, yeah? So in this case, if you throw an uppercut, I'm gonna go bam and shoot this in. He throws the hook punch, there's the ox jaw into that, and then back into that shot. And that should look familiar in your finger sets, at least if you have a version that I have. Does that make sense, folks? Yeah, so that's, that was stolen directly from Mr. Tate, and he, he used that in a, a recent seminar there, what I just showed you. Cool? All right, let's go up right today. Because that's going to stop that right leg from stepping forward. And again, I love it because it seems like this room is so much, especially the teachers in this room, are so very much aligned with each other in trying to progressively evolve tempo into fitting what's really happening out there in the real world. And unless I'm chasing him down, I'm not going to step and punch. I may, I may, and I, don't, I never say never, I may because he may be running from me and I want to step and punch. That's when that right leg shows. But a traditionalist, a boxer specifically, is going to jab and drag up. Right? Make sense? That, that unfortunately screws up things like leaping crane. Uh, for us, although we have adjustments, we'll see today. And then things like um, um, mace of aggression. I mean, I'm sorry, shield and mace. So just step through the punch. So the class, boom, shoot, boom. That right knee is right there, perfect, yeah? But if he doesn't have that right knee there, go ahead, uh, just drag up, right? From here, I have to go for the other leg, right? Or I have to, I have to modify, make sense? So I'm gonna play that. But today, we're gonna use a left jab and a right cross. So as he does the left jab, we're gonna uh, take that little piece of theme that I, I started you all with, with the bite. We're gonna bite that, uh, that parry. What I'm doing there is creating an angle, angle of cancellation. That gives him a small obstacle to have to get over with that cross punch. So instead of parrying it and then passing it that way, we're gonna bite the foam. As he uh, shoots that uh, cross punch, here, go ahead and shoot. One, I'm gonna uh, do a little bob and weave there. I do wanna change my levels because if that comes in as a hook, and I'm just simply going right into it here, well, I might maybe get five swords, but a true hook, uh, like not a haymaker, I'm gonna catch it. Does that make sense? So we're gonna take a little bit of a lesson on Friday, boom, and shoot that bob and weave through. An uppercut, right? Instead of a straight punch. Got it? So we're just gonna work that first. One, two, three. Make sense? If you're like me, he's being really nice. He's hitting the ghost over here and hitting the ghost over here to make me look good. Uh, but reality is, is, if he's coming straight, I'm going to need to uh, uh, weave back a little bit, pop back a little bit onto my right leg, getting that uh, uh, range out of the way right there, uh, uh, getting, getting myself out of range. As he's showing, uh, throwing that, some of you are going to feel that left flinching. There's nothing wrong with it. As the left flinch is just make sure it continues in orbit so it pops in. And fits. It's a little tricky for some people to get the timing of boom, right? And if that's uh, uh, you know screwing you up today as you learn this concept, go ahead and just extract that and move off the line with that uh, slip. Bam! Does that make sense? All right. We're just working up there right now. And if, if you want, since we're all on the same page, you want to boom and then shoot that hammer strike down. Go ahead and let's go up to there and then we'll play. So. Uh, Let's start to add a little bit of stuff because people are already coming up with stuff and I'm gonna steal. So uh, <laughs> so we have this shot here. Now, this is my, my own little thing. I, I've got this, I think, I wanna say Angelo Collado uh, probably put this into my muscle memory years and years and years ago and I use it all the time. As he's throwing that across, drop him with that shot there. Now he come back up in the uppercut and drop back into the hammer, yeah? That just gives me a uh, uh, less waste of motion, it's, it's, it's economizing my motion because that right hand from point of origin is aligned as he's pulling that uh, second strike to shoot in. Make sense? So why not go ahead and take it with me, okay? So we'll add that, play, uh, play with that a little bit. 
and then we'll continue going through, boom, shoot, pop, drop. From that shot there, what I'm gonna do is, for this section, I'm gonna go ahead and, and shift out and pop the heel palm to the jaw and catch, okay? Let's see how that works, All right? So, uh, so as he comes in, one, two, three, four, oh, never mind, I wanna do this, do that. This is gonna come through. We're gonna stick to the same pattern that we've already been taught through the classical version of the form, or the technique, makes sense? So we're gonna go ahead and go there. Boom, hammer is gonna continue in, in that uh, motion. We're gonna open up the heel palm and go ahead and get him on his heels, boom. Now, I recognize that opportunity. I'm not gonna knock the glasses off and shoot there, okay? <laughs> to see how that works. Now he's bent back, watch my right leg, hop, kick, and shoot him back down. Yeah, that's my new ending. Uh, thank you, thank you all for being creative. Because again, this is not what I was originally going to teach, but it's happening now. So, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Come around, shoot that in. Boom, shift, knee, take down. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Now, notice what we're doing, themed in together with what I did earlier. So all this battle stance, battle stance, battle stance. I'm not staying flat. I'm using my tempo just in a more practical way. All, all the years that we do this over and over, then all of a sudden this starts to happen, right? And then this, this switch starts to happen. All that settling and all that power and that sources, those, those start to come out hopefully organic. So one last time, you good? So one, two. Let the, don't leave that behind, let it come with you. Now we're gonna explode back up, bam, shoot that in. Go ahead and drop the hammer like we were taught in the original, bam. Catch the shelf there, don't come all the way around, just contour shape, bam. Continue around, shoot this up, pop, catch, knee, take home. Okay? Clear? Let's all face this. out of just these little lessons here. Make them, make them your own. From here, you want to go into flashing wings. It's right there for you, yeah? You want to go, let's talk about that arm again. Some of you came up underneath. We did this, right? Well, what about the sleeper? Come back in, take them down. Make sense? Some people say you can't sweep that leg. Well, hop it. <laughs> right, we'll take it that way. I taught that I think about here three or four years ago how to reap, reap the leg versus a sweep. Um, uh, and then I got to give Mark uh, some love here. He was going boom, crack, nail it, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. That's a hoover drill my school does, oh, and uh, it's it's one of those that you want gloves. <laughs> <with. laughs> because once it hits it, it hits it. Boom, you shoot that in. Now we got right back in. Again, the reason why I wanted to just show you the flavors is it's that toolbox. My theme today, again, is just consistently trying to keep our, our, our minds as Kempoists open. Don't get caught in that this was the Red Book's way. This is the way Mr. Parker taught. That's not the way my understanding, I was not exposed to Mr. Parker, but my understanding after reading what he wanted, it's not what uh, uh, we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be making it our own. And something that I really do share a lot with my students is by Blue Belt, Kempo should be your own. I don't want you to look like me. You'll have pieces of me. You'll have pieces of AJ Collado and Sensei Juan Serrano. All these guys teach at my school. They're part of that family. But I want to see Diane's Kempo. You know? I want to see Bruce's Kempo. Yeah? Make sense? Make it your own. That's the only way. And expand. Expand your brains. Explore different eyes. Yeah? Thank you so much for your time.